Hello, everybody, and welcome to today's episode of 10 Times Better. Um, glory to Jesus, we have been on this episode for, I'm sorry, we have been on this um, journey for the past four to five days. Sorry, I missed one. And um, it has been good. It has been God. We have talked about some content points that could move our life forward, no matter how, like, they seemingly look, look little, but in my opinion, everything put together um, makes um, exam preparation in general, and even our lives in general, you know, gives it a, a boost, a, a a solid boost, if there's a word like that, you know, to um to a better to a better life for to a better experience, you know, educational experience and life experience in general. You know, for example, she talks about Thanksgiving, talks about meditation, talks about dancing. You know, these are things that they look very little, but if it becomes a habit, you know, to every one of us, you can imagine where um what we would have out of our lives in a very short time. So we're very, very much grateful to God for um the past three to four days and I'm very excited for what the Lord is about to do for us today. Um I'm just gonna say a short prayer before I give the floor back to our convener. Um, Heavenly Father, we thank you for today. Thank you for the smile of our convener. Thank you because you you have you have been the to pour out into her that she might pour out to us. Daddy, we thank you. Father, we give you all the glory in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, we pray that your mercy will not depart from us. We pray that the wisdom and the grace to keep on doing and to keep on receiving from you will not depart from us in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray that as your word comes forth, I pray that as the wisdom that you have poured into your daughter comes forth, I pray that our hearts be open to receive it. We will not miss any part of it. And I pray that as we implement, we will see results by the power in the name of Jesus Christ. I ask that you take over this time. I ask that you take over this very short time that we have and let it impact us positively in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for in Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. So Amen. let our hearts be open to receive for today. So you have the floor. Come being a man. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you for joining. Thank you for that wonderful time. Uh, of prayer, brief prayer. So today, today's day five, and we are grateful to God. I'm sincerely grateful to God for bringing me through. Sometimes I just wonder, like, hey, Jesus, who sent me work? Or who sent me work? <laughs> but His grace has been, has been, um, you know, carrying me through, and I'm grateful. So I just want to remind us what this program is all about in general. It's not going to maybe teach you your anatomy topics or your courses or whatever. It's just basically to enhance your learning experience, to help you um, overcome the phobia and the anxiety that comes with you know, academics and basically exams. So, and the aim is to put everything into your daily routine so that it, it becomes part of you and not just when you're preparing for your exams. And that's why day one, we talked about, uh, day two rather, we talked about Thanksgiving, we talked about dancing, we talked about meditation. And today we are talking about something that is you might not see it as something that is important, but it's very important. And I'm just going to start today and then we'll continue in the coming days and we'll have prayer sessions and sessions of confession as well. So today we're going to be gleaning from the scriptures and I'm talking basically on um, vision. You, you need a vision. To, you know, we're talking about the mind categorically and we've talked about maybe the physical things that you can do to uh, help the mind because the mind is the basic tool you know, when reading is, is the ones that actually runs the entire system. It's like the control system, the central processing unit of the body, permit me to say that. So now we're going to look at it from the spiritual standpoint. Now, vision is something that, that you've seen with your mind. You might not necessarily have seen it with your eyes, but you have seen it in your mind. And it is so strong in your mind that it keeps you going. And that's why the power of vision is very important in your academic journey. And apart from the fact that you are painting the pictures in your heart, you want a bright future for yourself, you've seen yourself in this, and thank God for AI now. So you can imagine things and you know, put it in your mind and picture it and the likes. Yes, you can. But I want you to let you know that beyond that, God literally works with vision because the mind is where everything is being pictured. And that's why when he was dealing with Abraham, he had to reconstruct and reconfigure his mind. And that's why you know, many times he had given him prophecies, he had told him promises, but it didn't make sense to him at the time. And that was why he came and told him, okay, come outside, look at the, uh, look at the sky and count the number of stars in the sky. Can you count them? Of course, he couldn't count them. And that was what God told him. This is how your seed will be. This is how your descendants will be. And that picture was in his mind. So you see, your mind needs to be very, very strong. And it's a system that you need to hold on to. I remember when I was in... ICS, we call it ICS, so some people in their schools call it PTS, and you know, just year one, basically the first six months in school, you know, then it used to be the survival of the fittest. You know, I don't think it's they practice that anymore in schools of nursing, but in school of nursing, but school of nursing categorically, um, it's not even school of nursing, medical school, they, it's so strong that at any point in time, you can be demoted or even sent back home, period. So you need, you need your mind to have a picture of what God has 
has set for you. I remember then when I'll be reading and they'll be like, ah, it's not that, it's not by reading, it's not by this, it's not by that. And I'll be like, God, what exactly are you seeing here? I got to school at a very advanced age. I don't, I can't waste my time here. And sometimes he would give me dreams. Sometimes he would give me the scriptures. And he painted a picture in my mind. Sometimes I was, <laughs> I'll see myself, you know, on the capping day. And I'll wake up from that dream. I'm like, yeah, we are on this one. And, you know, when those times of overwhelming anxiety comes when you're reading and sometimes, uh, okay, I didn't talk about journaling. Wow, I forgot that. But journaling is very important at this time because when you have those dreams or you get those revelations, you, you have to journal. Because when those overwhelming thoughts comes, anxiety comes, you just pick your book, you know, your journal and read through and everything. So today I want us to read from scripture. <clears throat> we're going to read from a very um, popular verse, very popular verse in the scripture. So we're going to read from um, Zechariah chapter 4, Zechariah chapter 4. I'll just read quickly from here, quickly, very quickly, and paraphrase Zechariah chapter 4 from verse 1. Then the angel who had been talking with me returned and woke me as though I had been asleep. I'm reading from New Living Translation. What do you see now? He asked. I answered, I see a solid gold lampstand with a bowl of oil on top of it. Around the bowl are seven lamps, each having seven spouts with wicks. And I see two olive trees, trees, one on each side of the bowl. Then I asked the angel, what are these, my Lord? What do they mean? Don't you know? The angel asked. No, my Lord, I replied. Then he said to me, this is what the Lord says to Zerubbabel. It is not by force, nor by strength, but by my spirit, says the Lord of heaven's armies. Nothing, not even a mighty mountain, you stand in Zerubbabel's way. It will become a level plain before him. And when Zerubbabel sets the final stone of the temple in place, the people will shout, may God bless it, may God bless it. Yes. Then another message came to me saying, Zerubbabel, it is is Zerubbabel is the one who laid the foundation of this temple and he will complete it. Then you will know that the Lord of heaven's armies has sent me. Do not despise these small beginnings for the Lord rejoices to see the work begin, to see the plumb line in Zerubbabel's hands. The seven spirit, the seven lamps represent the eyes of the Lord that searches around the world. Praise the Lord. This is not a preaching session anyways, but I just read that to show you that God is concerned with even the minutest thing. Now, this background story to that was that they were building the temple and they had some oppositions. The opposition was so much that they were thinking that they might not be able to complete the temple. And it was really weighing them down. Just You might just be thinking now, you started school and your finals are about to come and you're like, will I be able to scale through, you know, pressure from everywhere and the lights. So but God is telling you, like I always say, keep the communication lines open. Don't ever hang up the phone. God is the owner of the telecommunication. So he's not complaining of the credit. So this is just to let you know that God is concern about the minutest detailed details of your life and that includes this exam and every stress that you're going through in this exam and then god came and came to him in a vision he had to give him a picture you know when i when my eyes got open to this scripture i was like why did god have to give that picture i literally went to look for the picture you know online how does this picture look like gave him a lampstand and then connected it to an olive tree to show you that that source cannot dry. It will continuously put oil on that lamp, that lampstand. And once there's oil on the lampstand, the fire will keep on burning. And he said, don't ever think this, so no matter what you're looking at now, don't even bother yourself. I'm telling you now that the hand of the Bible has started it, you will surely complete it. So I'm telling you now that you have started your training, you will surely complete it. Now, God had to paint that picture in the mind of the Bible so that it will not be abstract. And he told him, he said, it's not by power, it's not by mind. That's what we usually say in King James Version. But this version says, it's not by force, not by strength. So in the coming days, I would, you know, share some experiences and how you can scale through and how that if you don't have a, a picture, if God has not given you a picture, you really need to sit into God and begin to let him give you that picture because that's what will sustain you. I think it's three weeks, about three to four weeks now to the nursing council exams. You can still have it now because it will solidify you as you walk as you prepare, as you sit down in the exam hall, that picture will be in your mind and you will know that it doesn't matter. This exam, we are going to do it and we are going to pass. So today, basically, what I just want to let you know is that you need a picture. You need a vision of the end. You need to see the vision of the end. That's what is going to keep you. As you read your book, you know, when the breeze of anxiety or the breeze of phobia or the breeze of depression comes, you are able to ward it off and you're able to shake it off because of that vision, that picture that is in your heart that God has given to you. And it's not just to have the vision, it's not just to have the picture, it's, it, it's about bringing it to your heart, bringing it to your face, bringing it to your mind at every point in time, you know, as you prepare for this journey. And one of the importance of this vision is not just that it's going to help you for your exams, it's going to help you as you go on in the profession. That's why as a student now, you need to have it because nothing is no joke, man. And it's not just even nursing, every other profession has its own pros and cons. 
So today, we're going to continue tomorrow and in the coming days. But today, I want to charge you that if you have not gotten a vivid vision, it might not necessarily be in a dream. It might be maybe you're reading scripture or you're talking to somebody and it just struck you. And God will just speak it and begin to paint pictures in your mind, showing you the vision of the end. So that's basically what I'm going to be doing today. Today, if you don't have a vision yet, talk to me. Whether you're a student on this call or not, we are still going to be students at every point in time. So begin to talk to God that Lord, give me, show me the vision of the end. Show me the, a vivid vision that I need as I progress in my academic journey, as I progress to my exams, the examination hall, as I progress in the profession, whatever profession you found yourself. Even if this, this is a, exclusive for the nursing profession, but we might still have other people here. So ask him now and let this be your heart cry for today, throughout today. Tomorrow we're going to be um, um, taking talk, uh, sorry, testimonials, testimonies, or your experiences of today, you know, asking the Lord to give you vision, to show you vision. And one of the ways you can get um, vision is studying the Bible. I know you're preparing for exams, and you might not have all the time and everything, but just give 15 minutes, 20 minutes, 30 minutes, and give it wholeheartedly to the scriptures. I was talking about one story the other day, and I said, I was reading, and, you know, Everybody was just like, it's not about those I waited, it's not about those I waited. And I, everything just began to enter my head. And I just closed my book and I picked my Bible and I was like, God, you just need to start talking now because I can't waste my time. And I started reading. And I picked Psalm 46 that day, you know, reading. I was reading other scripture, other um, chapters, and I just got to Psalm 46 and I was reading from verse 1. And God to God is in the midst of her, she shall not be moved. He does this five, moving down. Then when I got to verse 10, be still and know that I am God, I shall be exalted in the heaven. I shall be exalted among the heathen. That one was just like, it just blew me up and I was like, we are on this. God's got my back. God's got my back. We are doing this together. So that helped me and many other ones helped me. So today, talk to God and tell him. And if he has given you a vision before, he can give you multiple. He can give you many other ones. And he can sharpen the one that he has given to you. So that's basically what I have for today. I want to believe and I want to trust that you've learned one or two things. And um, he will help you in your academic journey, your final exams, every other subsequent exams. And, you know, I'll be sharing some vibrations <laughs> that I've had, you know, in this journey as we go so it's a wrap from my end it's a wrap so i don't know if anybody wants to share maybe an experience or what i've said so far resonated with you and you're going to continue throughout today anybody no so you don't our dear public relations officer director of publicity what do you have to say anybody okay so if there's nothing then over to you you can conclude the meeting you can end the meeting now that was a very very that was a very very mind-blowing session um, the power of vision, it's its just very, very important. I think that's what I was trying to link up to meditation yesterday. Uh, mm. The power of vision is very, very important. And um, the power of putting our minds on, on one thing and like meditating on the word of God and having it enlarged in our spirit. Like what she said earlier, yeah. I was trying to say that what God was trying to do for Abraham, Abraham was to enlarge his mind, enlarge his vision. That was something he had never seen before. That was something he had never imagined before. And with the realities that were around him, his mind could not actually comprehend it. So let's not blame the man. So God had to help his, course, his infirmity, yeah. you know, and yeah. um, the same thing goes for us. Sometimes we cannot just imagine, especially if we have been used to failures and all of that, we cannot really mm. just imagine how how you enter the exam hall and um, be successful. I think in that point in time, we should just um, pick up the scriptures and the Lord will help our mind. Like he directs you to like our like our convener has said, he yes. directed to the right place and he, he, yes. he would help your mind begin to build from there. Sometimes you just you just see that your mind wants to travel, you just like you just sit down and you, you won't know why you just go quiet and oh your, your mind is just doing all that work. Like it begins to enlarge yeah. and enlarge and enlarge in your spirit. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just a beautiful thing to see and behold. And you can imagine if we just take that um um this point and then copy and paste it <laughs> like you were saying, copy and paste it on our um education or sorry academic life just always envisioning and imagining what how you succeed and how that your your career would impact the world and your immediate environment um it's just it's just um it's just going to be mind-blowing at the end of the day i strongly believe that the lord wants us to begin to implement this um point in our academics um and so please just slap on that as well now um, particularly right. my final experience i would share in the coming days because i struggled personally i did struggle and it actually took god and he was around all the way. We don't have time. We just have to wrap up. Tomorrow we'll continue. We'll all continue. right. So it's a wrap for today. Father, we are grateful. We are grateful for, for the wisdom that we have received today. We are very grateful. Take all the glory in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, we ask that you pour yet the more into the convener of this program. And we pray that this program gets to the world in the name of Jesus. We pray for mm. every struggling student. We pray that the grace to envision great things, the grace to envision mm. the, the opposite of what the devil is showing them, the grace to envision what is in the heart of God concerning them. Because some of us, our major problem is just that our mind cannot align with what, what God has in his own mind. And so I pray mm. in the name of Jesus Christ that every student's mind that is connected to 
Yes, energy and beyond that your heart begins to align with what God has for him and for them in his own heart in the name of Jesus Christ. Their minds are enlarged to take it. They begin to envision what God envisions about them in the name of Jesus Christ. And we pray, oh God, for the 10 times better experience program that is going on. We pray that you increase us. We pray that we're not weary in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, for in Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you very much for joining. See you tomorrow. And please don't forget to keep praying. Lord, enlarge my mind. Give me vision for this exam, for this profession, and even beyond. So see you tomorrow.